Okay, hi everybody. Uh, in this video, I'm going to do a quick introduction to Centaurus. Uh, we've already been using Centaurus for a little bit, but uh, Centaurus is really meant to be used as a computational um, sort of resource cluster. Uh, what we've done so far is just use Centaurus, uh, the login node, as a way to run our code, which is not really how these systems are intended to be used. They have a lot more uh, computational resources than we're taking advantage of. Uh, in fact, we can see here when we check our uh, Centaurus uh, cluster information, we actually have about 20 nodes, give or take, that we can use uh, to help us uh, do computation for different types of jobs. Some of them are GPU based, uh, the rest of them are CPU based, and these are what we're gonna learn how to take advantage of today. So first I wanna bring your attention to the uh, Centaurus user notes. These are very useful uh, in lieu of this video for actually just checking out how to use Centaurus, getting basic instructions. You can see the basic instructions to log in uh, you can see a few details, although I believe this is a little out of date about what Centaurus, uh, what resources Centaurus has. Uh, and you can just read a little bit about how Centaurus works. Uh, the later information here is actually what we're interested in. Uh, for now, we're interested in submitting compute jobs. Uh, but first we're going to take, uh, we're, we're going to show you two ways to interact with the resources on Centaurus. So we can start with this one. So uh, we're gonna learn how to submit a compute job. Uh, a compute job just means some, some program or maybe multiple programs. Uh, what a job is is really defined however you want. Uh, you submit your job via script, uh, most commonly bash script, although you can actually use other scripting languages, uh, but it's a little trickier to do that. So we're gonna use bash. Uh, for our example here, just like we do in the example here. So let's go ahead and make uh, a directory and we will use this directory as our example. So we will create a bash script. Uh, of course, you can use whatever text editor you want. Uh, there's no particular way to do this. We will just create, uh, for me, I'll create a test.sh. Now every bash script starts with this bin bash. Uh, this is called a shebang. Uh, it's just uh, basically tells the terminal what uh, script, what interpreter to use to interpret your script. Uh, so it always has to be the first line in your program. Uh, after that, we are going to add a few arguments. This script is going to be read by, let's go ahead and make a note here. This script will be read by slurm for arguments. Uh, then executed on each nodes that you request. So uh, we'll start off every slurm argument within a batch script starts with this pound sbatch argument. So the first argument we'll give it as a job name. So we might just call it my job just as we do in this example. We would like our partition to be Centaurus because we're not using GPUs. Uh, we can request time. Uh, in this case, we'll request uh, one minute uh, because this is not going to be a long job. Uh, we will also request a few additional resources. So we'll give it the in argument, or I guess the nodes argument uh, equals one because we just want one computer. Uh, we will also give it the in tasks per node argument, uh, and we will ask for one. Uh, in tasks per node uh, is basically the core count. It's how many cores you ask for. Uh, there are a few other arguments you can give Slurm. You can ask for a specific amount of memory. Um, in this case, we'll just use the default for now. Uh, you usually don't need more than the default. If you uh, use more than the default, Slurm will kill your program. Uh, and for the assignments we're doing for now, that's actually okay. 
Uh, you shouldn't be using more memory than the default for anything we do. Uh, if that changes, I will let you know uh, how to do it differently. So uh, everything after this, this is enough uh, to, to run a, a basic Slurm job. Uh, so everything after this is a regular bash script. And a bash script is just anything you've ever typed on the terminal. If we wanted, we could change directories. Uh, we could list the files. Uh, you can do lots of things inside of a bash script and it will just execute them line by line from top to bottom. In this case, let's just do a quick command called hostname. Uh, and I'll show you what hostname does really quick. So if I type hostname, you'll see it prints this gal i1.uncc.edu, uh, which is the node that we are logged into. Uh, so uh, hopefully what this will do for us is print the name of the server that we are allocated. So the way that Slurm is going to, to work is it's going to try to match us to nodes that have the resources we request and then automatically run this script to perform the job. So let's give that a shot real quick to see what this looks like. So to run this, we will do sbatch test.sh just as it shows over here in our instructions. Uh, and we'll see that it Submitted a batch job 63419. Now I wasn't fast enough this time, but uh, if you do SQ, it will show you your job when you run it. This job was very short, so of course it didn't take any time at all. Uh, if we run it immediately after we run the job, you can see that we started a job 63420, 63420 on Centaurus with the name my job. Uh, my username, and at this point, the state was pending because I just submitted it right when we ran this command. If we check it again, of course, it's already done. Uh, time is zero because it hasn't been running yet. Uh, and these are the resources we allocated. And you can actually get SQ uh, to give you a lot more information. We don't need to do that right now, but uh, SQ can tell you a lot about your job, what resources you request, what's going on. Uh, this other job that somebody else is running, you can see, uh, is running. The R means running, uh, and it's been running for three hours. Sometimes you have more to compute. Uh, of course, for your assignments for now, they should not take three hours. We try to keep them a reasonable length. Uh, maybe later this semester you will have those cases. So we'll check here, uh, and we have three files now. We started with one which was test.sh, uh, and now we have three files, slurm 63419, which corresponds to our first run, and 63420, which corresponds to our second run. So if we see what's in these files, you'll see that instead of gal i1, we have gal c1, which is compute one. So our code did run on the other server. Uh, and of course, you're not limited to a single command. It will run the commands in order. We could run the hostname three times. We could echo, hello. We could ask GCC what version it is. Uh, and of course, that means we can run our own code as well. So let's give this a shot. Let's just see what happens when we do this. So we'll get, get a job 63421. Uh, of course, it's already done. None of that took any time at all. Uh, and then you'll see that we print the hostname four times, and then we print hello. Uh, and then we see we're using GCC 8.5.0. So uh, it will just execute the commands one by one. So that's pretty straightforward. This is very useful. These are called batch jobs. Uh, and the reason they're called batch jobs is that often you have a bunch of uh, work. You have like, work being you want to run some code. Uh, your program needs to run for a while, maybe you're collecting data, anything like this, uh, and you just want to submit it and leave it alone. So if my code was going to run for three hours like this other person, uh, I could log, I could submit it to Slurm, log out, and go do something else. Uh, I don't have to sit here with the terminal open, making sure I'm connected to the internet, watching it compute. You submit it, you walk away, you go do something else. So that's the main idea behind batch jobs. Uh, now, 
that's very convenient, especially if you need to run a long running program. But uh, when you're developing and debugging, it may not be as useful. It may actually be very frustrating to submit your job um, and then have to wait and then read a file to see what happened. So that, that can be a little annoying. So if we want to, uh, we can actually go ahead and uh, use Slurm a different way. So we're going to uh, use Slurm a different way. Uh, the other way is what we call interactive mode. So we can use interactive mode. Um, we can allocate nodes using interactive mode and run our jobs interactively. Just basically kind of like the way you've always run your code is what interactive means. So let's look at an example. So instead of using sbatch, we will use what's called salloc, slurm allocate. Uh, and the arguments are the same. So we could say interactive job. Uh, we ask for a certain partition, we'll say Centaurus. We ask for time. Uh, in this case, I'll give myself uh, 10 minutes in case I talk too much. Uh, and then we'll use nodes equals one and in tasks per node equals one as well. Uh, now, to be clear, if I wanted to use four cores, I could request four cores. And the same is true in your bash script too. It will just work correctly. So uh, we press this, you'll see it says granted job allocation, waiting for resource configuration. Uh, and if we check SQ, you'll see that we were allocated our space, we have our name, we are running, we've been running for 10 seconds, we got gal C1 again. Now, you might notice we're still on gal I1, and if I run host name, it still says gal I1. So uh, clearly we didn't just log into this node. If we want to use the node now that it's allocated to us, we can use the command s run followed by whatever you wanted to do. So we run s run hostname and you'll see we got gal dash c1. So s run will take whatever your command is, whether it's a single statement, a bash script, a C program, anything that you want and run it on the allocated resources. So this is a much better way to do things like debugging, uh, you could even Valgrind hostname. Of course, you don't need the Valgrind hostname, but you can. Um, and that will just work. Everything will just work. Uh, the key, though, is to make sure you are using srun if you're developing interactively this way. Otherwise, you might not get the result you expect because it will still run on the login node, which is not what you want. Uh, anyway, that's about it for how to use Centaurus. Uh, so maybe review this video if you can't remember and make sure you check out these notes. And as always, there is a resources page on Canvas that contains this resource and other resources for you to reference. All right, everybody have a good one.